Do you find yourself getting stuck making a beat and you just can't finish it? Maybe you're trying to understand how to use effects such as reverb or delay to give your song that nice professional sound. I decided to put together a series that walks through the complete end-to-end -end song creation. In this video, we're going to be focusing on how to use effects to get our sound from sounding basic to sounding professional. So let's jump right into it. Another pro tip, if you're not using it, after you have the instruments you like, press Control L or Command L if you're on a Mac. It'll assign them to an empty mixer track. Another thing that I'd recommend is add reverb for texture, but don't add reverb on the actual mixer channel itself. Like don't add reverb on the piano channel. So we're gonna create a group for the electric pianos, and then we're gonna create a reverb send where all of the instruments that we wanna to add to that reverb are gonna get sent to. I'll show you how to do that. Grab any channel. I typically go to the right and grab one of the ones that are far out. I right click it. And I say dock to left. So you see here, I docked number 30, press F2. Uh, this will be our E piano bus. Then these ones, instead of sending them to the master, send them to that electric piano bus. Whoops. So then now both of my electric pianos are going to the bus. The bus controls the overall volume of that group. So buses are groups where you can control the volume or add effects to the entire group. And then from there we go to the master and then I'm going to grab another one, number 35. Let's dock that to the left as well. And F2, we'll call this reverb send. Send channels are different from bus groups because buses are summed in that group. The instruments go to that group only and then from that group anywhere else. Send channels receive signal but they're not summed into it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I have my piano bus right here. It's going to the master, but I'm also going to send it to the reverb send. So then the reverb is receiving that signal, but that signal is still going to the master. So it, any sort of send groups or send channels uh, are strictly for adding additional effects. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So now inside of my reverb send, I've selected Luxverb and make sure that your dry signal on the output is set to zero because we want this reverb send channel to be only the effect. We don't want to mix in the actual sound. We don't want the dry signal. We only want the process signal and then we can fiddle around with the volume to see how much we want to add back into the mix or how much we want to take away. So uh, one thing that I like about uh, Luxverb is not only do you have the reverb portion, which you can play around with the decay um, but you also have this feedback version here that lets you pitch shift. So it has like here plus 12. Let's see. Come on now. See, so now I'm using the send just to kind of add a little texture in the background. It sounds fuller, but let's go a step further. That's a long decay. Let's take that decay down to like, I don't know, three seconds, two, nine, 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 nine. So now let's create, because we're doing lo-fi and this is specifically for you lo-fi folks. Um, you want to bit crush your signal. You want the signal to sound like there's some distortion in it. You can use fruity squeeze. If you just have the default bit crushing VSD, there's also a free one from Isotope called vinyl, which adds some crackling. And if you click this lo-fi, it'll add You'll see exactly, I'll show you right here. So we'll take that E piano and let's dock this left. So this will, we'll say F2, a bit crush send because we don't want, we want to blend the signal in with the other one. We don't want this to be a group that goes straight to the master. We want to sort of blend it like the reverb. Um, so I'm sending that E piano. I want to send that E piano to it. And yeah, the E piano's going out to the bit crush and you'll see what I mean, what it does. You hear that? So if I take this E piano and take it away from the master, see, this is what it's doing. I'm gonna bring the dust down. This is free, by the way. So you can go on Isotope's website, you can get it, it's a free plugin. I like a different one, so I'm gonna delete this. I like this one from Kilohertz, Kilohertz Bit Crush. 
because you can change the the frequency at where you want it to crush to. So um, you, you're sampling down that that signal down to 600 kilohertz. You can sample it all the way down to like 200. So you can find where that sweet spot is for you. I like six six kilohertz or so six thousand hertz. Sounds kind of nice. It's a little bit bright. something here let me let me turn the volume on these down a bit more on the note the note velocities so you can hold alt and i'm scrolling down on my mouse wheel to take down those volumes even lower because then it plays it really soft so if i want to take down the group take up the group i can turn the volume up on the group itself but it's played very softly Another piece of advice that I have, and again, I use this on my last track, that's why I'm thinking about it right now, is let's clone this for an intro, or we might leave it like that, but I want to I wanna just stretch out those chords, so I don't want any other note playing, I just want that chord being played, and this one, whoops, this one is okay if it's quantized, doesn't matter, we can go Q, Control Q quantizes it. So we quantized it, and this is what I want to do right here. So I've opened up Edison on the master. I'm going to arm it to record what it hears, and I want to play this, and I want to just crank the heck out of that reverb. I'm going to mute the bit crush, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. And let's grab it from, from where the note stopped playing. Actually, from here. Whoop. There we go, from here to where the note stopped playing. And then if you click this, right here you can drag it out and put it on your playlist and you just turn that into a sample so let me turn my reverb back down i don't remember exactly what level is that but i'm going to play it lower and then i want to take this sample right here and reverse it so we can do something like this to transition to that first bar and then i'm going to fade them in like this See, so it's almost like a, a little buildup that happens. So you can put that at, at the end of either uh, four bars or eight bars, just something to kind of signal that transition to the next set of bars. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. If you've enjoyed it, and if you've been enjoying this series, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you share it with somebody who could use this information. And as always, I hope you've been inspired to go and make some music. Peace.